in this episode, we discuss NVH blocks and the modifications needed to take the 4 liter into racing applications. Um, cylinder blocks. So, there's lots of debate between the HO, the NVH, whether or not it's really necessary to have a girdle on them. I think um, the NVH block would be the best block because they were trying right. to cut down on the noise. So, what they were doing was adding material. You know, anytime you can take a lightweight block and add material to it, it's probably going to help it. Did That's you have the way any I problems with block flexing when you were racing? You oh, yeah. It, it's hard on the bearings. So you need a, uh, it looks like a frickin' got a centipede goes across the main caps. Yeah, the girdle. Mm -hmm. You've seen that? It looks like a centipede. It's got a little legs yeah. on it and goes across all the main caps, the girdle from yeah. the back. Yeah, we, we, used, we incorporated that. I, I brought them one from work. I said, the problem is these caps are moving fore and aft. Right. And, and the more power you make, the more it's going to move. In the NVH lab, they put some accelerometers on some of this, mm -hmm. and you can so see. There was actually, hang on a second. There was actually an NVH lab. Yeah, they were always doing huh. all kinds of testing. On, in the well, in the motor, what they did was, the NVH guys to en engine engineering and were saying we did some accelerometer tests and uh, we noticed that the block is moving fore and aft. And they said, well, enough to be concerned about. He says, are you seeing any wear in the bearings and stuff? And they had been. They had been seeing wear in the bearings, in the main bearings. So are you talking internally the block was moving around fore and aft or yeah, the whole yeah. motor? Well, no, right. the, 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 basically the bottom end of the block, like the caps and stuff, like it was going back and it was vibrating back and forth from length to length. Okay, it's the caps. Really? And they were vibrating, yeah, they were vibrating at different frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like vibrating and it's going back and forth. So they said, well, you know what, we were, we were looking at that. We were looking at the bearings and wondering why the hell are that this is the where is like on the outer edges of some of these bearings. So mm -hmm. they said, we, we've made this girdle that we're going to, we're testing. So they gave them a girdle and they told them what the torque is doing. They gave them the bolts and they, right. and uh, so you know, they put that on there with a the special locking nut. Well, that problem's gone. They came back and said, hey, the problem's gone. You fixed it. And they said, That's yeah, great. we noticed our bearings look better, too. And mm -hmm. then I said, well, and once I saw that, I grabbed one, and I said, I brought it right to Garth, and I said, here, put this on the engine. And so you had already, um, you'd already swapped in 258, the solid uh, main caps, right? You weren't using the, the hollowed out four liter yes. caps? Yes. I put right. solid 258 caps on that. I, what I did was I, every time they threw a 258 in the in the, in the trash uh, dumpster, totally I'd go out there and take the caps off. What are you doing? I said, I'm taking the caps. What for? I said, well, for that race project that I'm working on. What the hell is good is that? And I said, what's wrong with a four liter cab? I said, it's too flimsy. I don't trust them. I think they're going to break. Did I you said, ever break I, one? Yeah. 246, when it, started, when it started making power, it broke. I broke yeah. one. They had a little bit of reinforcement. They like hollowed the cap out. You know, it's got like yeah. a, it goes up high and then it hollows out in the middle and then it goes up high again. And, you know, and it, structurally and design wise, it looked pretty good mm -hmm. for a lightweight cap. Right. And then they, and then they ran it like that and they failed a couple of them. So they said, well, that's not going to work. And then they put a little rib in there. Mm -hmm. If you look at those caps, you got a little rib going across. Yeah, right in the middle. Yeah. I know yep. exactly they put a little rib about. in there. They put a little rib in there and the problem went away. They, the caps were designed correctly for a lightweight design, but the problem mm -hmm. is it wasn't intended to be used as a race piece. <laughs> no, it was never going to spend 9,000 RPM. <laughs> That's right. You know, and that was yeah. always my big beef. I always told those guys that when I was helping them, I said, look, you don't think it's going fast enough? I said, you know, process, you know, you know, procedurally, it's not going fast enough to get to where you want to be. I said, but you know, we got to address all these small little nagging problems until we get all these things fixed. We got to get the big ones fixed first, and we go after the small guys. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. and then you're gonna you're gonna pick up performance like you won't believe. I said, once we get some of these harmonics under control, the harmonics are the killer of the engine. 
especially if you're using a production engine as a race engine. Right. They didn't believe me until it was started happening. We started doing it, and we started fixing things, and all of a sudden the car started going faster and faster. And we went from 917 to 880, 889, 888, 85, 82, 70. And we, we, right, we basically passed the 70s and got right into the 60s. We did run in the 70s. We did run in the 70s, but we were right out of the 70s into the 60s. In a, just a four liter, <laughs> made over, fix it as you break it. Yeah. AMC motor. That's just yeah. incredible. And that didn't even have like a killer, a killer head that I had developed for the four cylinder. If I'd have put mm -hmm. that killer head on there, that thing would have probably run 820s. We got to get some people to start building those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most oh, yeah. Most guys want cross flow There's, heads, but. Like, no, that, you, know. you don't need it. it. The only problem with the, the U-Flow head is the fact that it heats up the intake. That's the only right. problem. But if you put if you put your, your thermal tape and stuff on the on the header pipe and on the bottom of, and all around the intake manifold, especially the bottom where it really he, heats things a lot, you, you're, you're going to be in pretty good shape. In the next episode, we'll discuss the final modification needed to take the 4 liter to 10,000 RPM.